Today at Speedy's Garage, I'm going to swing back and show you how I updated the Satoshi Grill Emblem on Project Sport Runner. I actually did this work as part of the HID projector upgrade I worked on a while back, but that project became more complex than I thought it would be in and of itself, so I didn't want to further complicate matters by adding this in. So now I'm going to show you how we got it done. All the parts I use will be in the description, so here we go. We're going to start with the grill, which is held in place with some small clips. They are fragile, so you want to be careful. And you just use a long flat blade screwdriver to disconnect it. And you'll have to work your way along the grill because some of them want to snap back in place as you're trying to release other ones, like that one did. So it makes it a little bit tricky. It'll take two hands, so just work slowly. These do tend to break with some frequency. But you can get replacements online, it's not that big a deal. And on this grill, there is one that's a little bit tricky to get to. You can see it way down there at the bottom. So be aware of that one if you have a grill like this. This is off of a 97 that I modified. So you'll just have to look at yours and see how the clips are set up. And here's what the back of the grill will look like when you get it taken off. There were seven posts on mine that had little clips. And here's what the clips look like. That one's actually one that's halfway broken. These are about 20 years old, so they tend to break with pretty high frequency. This is what a unbroken one looks like. So I keep a bag of these on hand. I've had these in and out of this truck several times, so I always keep a few on hand to replace them when they break. I recommend you do the same. And when you get the grill removed, usually the little clips will stay behind, stuck in areas of the grill like this, here, here. I recommend you go and grab all of those out and put them back in the grill before you reinsert it. It'll make it easier to reinstall. And there is the part number for the emblem for those that are interested. And it's from a mid 80s BJ70 Land Cruiser. The rest of how to make this grill is already detailed out on my website, www.speediesgarage.net, if you want to see that. It's actually a little bit complicated to make. It required cutting out a factory 97 factory grill cutting out the center, doing some fiberglass work to fill in any gaps, buying some mesh and shaping it to match the grill. And then I bolted mine in place. There's several ways people do this, but I bent mine around and bolted it in place so that it was a firm, strongest factory piece. The 70s emblem I had on here previously required a little bit more ingenuity to get it to fit. It's metal and it had tabs in the back like I showed you before. So I had to make that little aluminum bracket and get some button head Allen bolts that actually bolted in place. Just personal preference, like I said, I've had this one a while, I'm ready for something different. The new one is plastic. And to get it installed, we're going to use a Dremel to trim some of the tabs off the back. JB Quick and about $6 in stainless steel hardware. I always use stainless steel and things like this to prevent rust and corrosion. It costs more but I've never had any issues with it in several, several years of using it. So that's what I highly recommend. And I've got some rubber washers there to give it some cushion. And you'll notice the nuts are actually locked nylon lock nuts. The size isn't super specific, but mine are three quarter button head bolts, three quarter in length. I believe they are 12 by 24, but don't hold me to that. I found ones that I thought were the right diameter to fit. And the plan is to make a recess in the back of the Toyota emblem so that, that sits down in it and then JB weld these to the emblem and that'll become our tab to mount it with our washer, our rubber grommet in between, and finally the nylon lock nut. And ooh, that's gonna look really good. So what I did is I took a measurement across the bottom of the grill and it's, let's call it 31 and a quarter inches in the opening. Then I measured the emblem from the longest section which is the corner of the T to the corner of the A and we're right about 14 inches. We're going to subtract that from our first measurement. Okay, so we took our measurement, we got 31.25 total distance. We know the emblem is 14 inches. We're going to subtract that from the 31.25. I'm not going to do it in my head because I have modern technology here. 31.25 minus 14 that gives us 17.25 inches. That's the remaining distance left inside the grill after the emblem takes up the space it consumes. Now, we need to divide that by two because we want it centered in the grill. So 17.25 divided by two, 8.625. Well, how much is that? How, how are we gonna measure that with a tape measure that's in fractions? We start 
kind of guessing. I start off at uh, four eighths, you know, is half. Four over eight would be half, so I know it's bigger than that. So I'm going to try five eighths. Oh, 0.625. So this is eight and five eighths from each side. We'll have it centered. We'll do the exact same thing from top to bottom, and then we'll know where we're going to put it. We'll make a couple of tick marks and then get it mounted up. So there it is centered up. It ended up being eight and five eighths from each side and one and five eighths top to bottom. Now we're ready to mount it. I put some blue painter's tape on it to hold it in place and I left the top clear so I could put a level on it just as a sanity check. You can see that we're level there. It does look right from a visual perspective. So now we're gonna mark the spots to put our bolts through. I didn't show you this because you guys have seen me use a Dremel a lot lately, but I used a standard cutoff wheel and I just trimmed what got in the way. In this case, it was just the tab around the O, and then I used some snips to shorten the tabs around the A and the T, and now I'm just gonna come back with a little sanding barrel and flush, make that flush. And there it is trimmed. The reason I left the tabs on the ends is because I figured it'll help me get the emblem level and make that easier. So next I laid out the tape measure so that I could find the center of the emblem and then I put the rubber washers in place that are going to act as our cushion because those are the biggest parts and those are what are need to be hidden behind the emblem itself. So the O's were a pretty good candidate for the bolts and then we had to figure out something on the last one. It's going to show just about a sixteenth of an inch of that washer behind the A and the T but unless you're right up close to the vehicle looking for it you'll never see it. Those are spread out pretty evenly so that's where we're going to put ours. I'm just going to mark them with a silver sharpie and then get to work with the Dremel some more. Okay, so I have searched through my Dremel bag of tricks, and I think one of these three bits is probably gonna be the ticket. All of them have teeth on the end. All of them are cutting bits. So I'm just gonna have to try them out and see which one will work. My, my idea <clears throat> is to make a recess for the bolt head to sit in, just a little pocket. We're gonna have to rough up the plastic for the JB Weld to stick anyway. So at the same time, if we can just make a small recess that's about the depth of that bolt head, it'll make it more flush when it mounts to the vehicle. We'll see how we do. So there's where we ended up. In the end, this bit did the best. I believe that is a carbide cutting bit. And I just used it like a pencil, like you saw, just to hollow out the center. Be careful, you don't want to go all the way through, obviously, or make it too thin where it's weak. But I shaved out probably an eighth of an inch or so, maybe a little bit less. And I also used it to shave down the bolt heads, just so they would be a little bit more flush to the actual emblem. Then I came back with a sanding barrel and just roughed up the area all around the divot so that the JB Quick would have something to bond to. And for this, I'm gonna do things a little bit different. I'm gonna mix up a little bit of JB Weld actually on the areas of contact for the bolts. And then I'm gonna mix up some extra on a piece of cardboard to use to kind of fill in around the bolt heads to hopefully give it some more strength. What I'm worried about is a failure down the road. JB Weld's pretty strong stuff, but it's not invincible. You got about four minutes once you mix it with the JB Quick, so move fast. And I'm just mashing the bolt head down in the divot and letting it find center. And now I'm going to mix up our extra. And don't be stingy. But also remember this has to sit flush against the uh, grill. So you don't want to cause an area that it'll have to rest, rest against or something like that to make it uneven. And for some strength I'm going to kind of work it out a little bit away from the actual threads of the bolt. And JB Weld kind of has a tendency to flow smooth as it dries. So don't be too worried about what it looks like. It'll flatten itself out. And if we get any on the threads, we'll just use a chisel or a pair of pliers or something to scrape it off afterwards. It won't hurt anything. And the idea for spreading it out the way I am, away from the bolt threads, is to give it more surface tension to withstand tightening that lock nut that we want to put on it. All right, with that, we're going to let it dry, see how we did. So I got a little worried that the nylon lock nuts would put too much stress on the JB Quick and cause those bolts to snap off. So I've dumped out my spare parts jug. Now I'm gonna sift through all these little nuts and bolts and try to find something that'll work. 
I'm betting if you've done a little bit of work on cars, you've spent some time in your shop doing the same thing. So I found a handful of potential candidates that'll fit. However, they're not stainless and I bet they're gonna rust over time. I found a collar washer or lock washer like that, lock nut. Um, it's serrated. I think I'm gonna go to the hardware store, pick up some of those stainless steel, and then we'll put some blue Loctite on it just to make sure it never comes loose. So here are our bolts, JB welded to the back of the emblem. And here are the stainless steel serrated lock nuts I picked up from the hardware store. I don't know what size I said they were earlier, but they're quarter by 20, pretty standard size. I'm out of blue Loctite, so I'm gonna use red on this because it's what I have on hand. It's a little bit stronger than blue and will work just fine. And now we're ready to install the emblem. We're just gonna slide it back in to the location we had marked previously. It should fit nice and easy, which it does. I'm gonna take a peek, make sure it looks level, and it does. And now I'm gonna install our hardware. Remember, it's a rubber washer for cushioning. It's a stainless steel washer for strength. And finally, it'll be our lock nuts with a little bit of red Loctite on them. And this doesn't have to be super tight. This isn't a strength connection. The emblem is very lightweight. So really all you need to do is just get it held in place nice and snug. I'm doing it just enough to compress the rubber O-ring a rubber washer just a little bit. And these quarter by 20 lock washers are 11 millimeter. So I'm just going to gently tighten them with a nut driver. Remember, you don't want to over torque your JB Weld bolts on the other side. There you go. And when I mentioned reinstalling the plastic tabs first into the grill before reinserting it, this is what I mean. You got your tab part, you got your slot. Go ahead and slide it in this first. It clicks into place. Now when you install the grill on the actual vehicle, it'll just lock down easy peasy. Finally, here's where we ended up. I had the previous 1970s FJ40 emblem on Project Sport Runner for about 10 years, and it was time for a change. This fit the bill nicely. It's still a retro look, which I like, but slightly updated and really sets off the front of the vehicle. If you enjoyed this project, check out my website, www.speediesgarage.net for more like it, and hit subscribe in the bottom right hand corner to see what we get into in the future.